Gordon's bow, mate. Okay, but is my mantra in the shot? That's all I care about. It is, yeah. I you can see it. it. It's like perfectly in the shot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I'm like, fuck's sake, now I'm like, graphic <laughs> toys are down there. I mean, look at this fucking thing, mate. No, 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 no. We don't show, nobody needs to know. They don't know. <laughs> the, it's just a pop of color. It's yeah. because of the depth of field, it's just a pop of color. There you go, right there. That's perfect. Yeah, okay, there we go. Welcome to our pro. This is our first this is our first episode on YouTube, by the way. Oh yeah. It's going on YouTube. <laughs> oh now I'm nervous, man. I shouldn't have said that. You can never have said be nervous. That. I haven't no. even counted you in yet, so none of this may even make it into the podcast. Who knows? Okay. Alright, cool. You no, ready? Yeah, yeah. I think I don't know. You just go ahead and name a BPM. Okay. Uh seventy four point five. Seventy four point five. Take your time. I'm just gonna pull up a metronome real quick. <laughs> Screw it. I don't care. One, two, three, four. Oh, you were so spot on, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now you know the truth. Now you know I, that I heard the world's biggest flam. Talk but, about um, what's it called? Um, stage face. Stage face. It's not called stage face, is it? Game face. Game face. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. We're off to a good start, people. <laughs> Bro, our our new band is definitely called Stage Face. You yeah. and I are starting a band called Stage Face. It's gonna be freaking huge. I yeah, we wear tap out merch and we drink Monster Energy drinks the whole time. <laughs> That's pretty much our stage, stage attire. Face. All right, before we get into it, want to welcome in our newest patrons. So if you guys know, this podcast is supported by listeners. So we really appreciate that. You can always sign up to be a patron and get. Lots of hang time with me and Eddie at patron.com, patreon.com slash drum with Mike and Eddie. But our newest patrons are Adam Stanley, Eric Richardson, Toby Brownstone, Bo yes. Askew. Toby's a good dude. Uh, John Holbrook, John Box, great name. Lane Sanders, Sean Kelly, Mike Gruwell, Christopher Velasco, and Garrett Claggett. Woo. I know like four of those guys already, man. I Shame. love you, Sean it's like oh god you're supporting again mate i love it it's, yeah, it's let... amazing not to mention they are the ones that fueled the questions about groove that we'll be talking about a little bit later but first i have something for you that you don't know about okay go on i got a little game for you bud oh no is it how to set up a camera rig in about two seconds because we no. just know <laughs> we for everyone that's watching and listening by the way like i said you can't watch this on youtube now you missed out on the camera lesson that Eddie and I just went through. We did a, a white balancing lesson and uh, we yeah, dialed cool. things in. All right, here we go. I've got three questions for you, bud. Okay. Now, these are not fast answer questions, so take your time. I'll edit out the dead space if I can. <laughs> okay. Here we go. If you could replace any drummer in any band, past or present, who would it be? Um... Oh, oh, by the way, none of the answers can be Lars or Travis. <laughs> okay. I was just about to say Lars. <laughs> um, I would say... Um, mate, currently, I think I would love to to be Devin Taylor playing for Justin Bieber. Ooh, I just... Like, that's it. They... He is actually one of my favorite drummers, I think. He yeah. is just so tasteful. And I... Like, they're almost like heavy they're almost like a heavy rock band yet yeah. they're playing with, with like justin bieber and his new album's amazing the show i went to see i went to see Devin play with him and it was just insane and i think yeah currently i would love to be in that band uh i never would slide in there though i'm not that guy right uh, of course of course this uh, is just hypothetical yeah so i would say yeah justin bieber or um <laughs> slipknot <laughs> really yeah, I can I see you love, doing that. I would love to wear a mask and play drums, mate. I, I can think totally see so you doing good. that. I feel like an inner me who I don't know would come out and it would be like scary, you know? I mean, there there is a chance you have been doing it and I just <laughs> didn't know because how would I know? I mean, exactly. they tell me it's Jay Weinberg, but I don't know. Um, okay, next up. If you could retrack any drum part and put your spin on it, past or present, what would it be? Ooh. Oh. Other than Metallica or Blink-182? That, that is a very good question. Uh, I'm thinking a Deftones song, maybe. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking a Deftones song. Man. Or... But it's like, the thing is, I I want to put my own spin on it. 
I don't know if there's anything that Abe's ever done that I would do it differently. Yeah, I know it's true. Like, would you, are you gonna go like do do ga instead of do ga? <laughs> are you gonna go ga? Like yeah, he nailed it. Like, that seems like if I did that, it would just yeah, I'd go to flipping hell for that. Oh man, that's such a good question. I don't know because everything I'm thinking of, I'm like I would never mess around with that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh mate, you just, know I I think that the voice um, UK with Ash. America with uh, Nate Morton has been an awesome example of, look, we don't have a choice. We're playing this tonight. Yes, it's a classic tune, but we have to do it for TV. So we have to amp it up a little bit. And there's so many songs that they've done that I would consider to be legendary drum parts, mm -hmm. but I love the version of Nate Morton doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's cool sometimes just to hear somebody spin on it. I know they, uh, they did um, September by Earth, Wind and & Fire and Nate's version of it is like one of my favorite drum parts of all time, even though I think the Earth, Wind & Fire version should never be messed with. It's like, well, if you're going to do it, put your, you know, your spin on it for sure. But I mean, I don't know who, who you I would to love it. I can tell you right now. I want to okay. hear you and I'm not kidding. This is going to sound funny, but I'm not kidding. I would love to hear a live version of you playing Genie in a Bottle by Christina Aguilera. Oh, really? That is a banger. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> oh yeah i mean I, you would just yeah. kill that that or um or maybe like uh, what goes around comes around by justin timberlake yes like oh, i would love to hear you play like a modern pop tune that has that halftime feel yeah that's mate that's why i would love to play in like a like a big pop act but the yeah. band was, that's why i said justin bieber because it's yeah. like you listen to it and like some of the some of the variations they're doing in like the last choruses where like they have the freedom to sort of open up. I'm like, mate, this yeah. sounds like a flipping rock band that I would have been into when I was like 15 years old. I still can't figure out why these artists, whether it be Bieber or anyone, Ariana Grande, Jill Scott, why do you tour with the greatest bands of all time and then not track your album with them? I don't I understand know. it. Just record the damn thing. It sounds so much better live. Justin Bieber's put out these bangers and they're like, he did um tiny desk yeah yep that that was amazing you need to see that anyone if you haven't seen that guys go watch it and then he's done like a few live versions of his latest album and it came out at pretty much the same time as the album and i've just been like putting on that like listening to that over the album um versions they're so yeah. good mate i love that that's something yeah. that i made like a live take on like a pop album so mate to answer your question uh anything pop pop okay now here's here's one where you don't have to you know dog out anybody else because you get to actually borrow something if you right. could take one trait from any drummer in the world Ooh. what would it be you get to just walk up to him tap on on the shoulder there that trait transfers into you you now have the groove of steve jordan or okay. the math equations of neil peart whatever you want that's an amazing question uh i think i would tap the shoulder of stanley randolph and what are you taking? You don't get everything. You just get, you could have his foot speed. You could have his, his hands. His, his feeling six. Oh. And like, oh That's my. So specific. Lord. So specific. Yeah, hey buddy, <laughs> I just need your feeling six, eight. Did you okay. see that Aaron Sterling video I sent you? Oh, yeah, I've got Wait, so this one's in oh. six? Okay, hold on. Give me a second. There's one, two, three, four. Oh, shit. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> so good. Uh, yeah, I think okay, not not specifically as six, but his just be, his 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 way he shuffles and just moves yeah. around like three or a six. It's like effortless, and it's one of those things. I don't know about you, but every time I go to play something like that, like any so Stevie, a, a triplet tune, vibe. Yeah, any Stevie Wonder tune, I'm like, whoa, this is so. If this is another world, like yeah. I can't just dive into this and just mm. mess around upload this and be happy with it i'm <laughs> right here and like no, that's <laughs> that's when imposter syndrome kicks in is when you know that feel wise like i just filmed a youtube video that's going up tomorrow and there's uh, a songo in it so like an afro-cuban groove and there's right. um this kind of six eight afro-cuban bembe feel in it and there's imposter syndrome for sure when you're film filming that because you have to like tell the camera let's be clear i'm a ca caucasian dude in California, in a room by myself. So I'm taking yeah. a few liberties here. I'm not actually in Cuba gigging with somebody. So take it easy on me, internet, when I play this. I'm just having fun based off of a groove that I read off of a PDF. I'm not saying this is like the traditional roots of everything. And like, even same thing, when you start to swing a groove, you're like, oh, but I didn't grow up in New Orleans. And that yeah. imposter syndrome just kicks in hard. 
Yeah, it does, mate. I mean, that's why I like when we, when <laughs> every time I play the drum clinic, right? This is a proper I'm putting it all out there. <laughs> I have like a library of tracks that I've been practicing for ages leading okay. up to it. And some, most of them aren't rock. Okay. And it's a real annoying thing that I do. I get to it and I'm like, nah, man, like I, I'm a rock drummer. Yep. I chicken yep. out. I chicken out. I don't know. I don't know if you've been there where you've had like a few songs that you know you could play, but you go for the, the more comfortable track. Totally. It's, yeah. I, I need to get over that, mate. I need to, I'm saying that out loud. So everyone holds me accountable. Yeah. So, I think that, one thing that I learned through clinics, because in the beginning, same thing. I mean, you know, that uh, festival that I posted from like 12 years ago where I'm on that blonde DW kit, mm. I'm playing symphonic music, but I'm hitting like I'm in the Deftones, you know? So like I clearly played the way that I play and that I was comfortable playing. I just dressed it up with like some violins in the background and some chorus. But what I learned is that over time, I've probably you know, done a few hundred clinics now and maybe, I don't know, 20 drum festivals. I've learned that the thing that works every time is whatever I'm most excited about. And yeah. it doesn't work when I fall back onto like, I can nail this, but I've played it a million times. I'm not that excited about it. Like, I don't mind the mistakes as long as I'm truly excited about what I'm doing and the passion is showing through because the mistakes get forgotten so quickly because the, the audience and the crowd can see that I'm having the time of my life and I am rolling the dice and I'm taking some dice. I'm rolling the dice and I'm taking some risks. Yeah. And I think they appreciate that. So, but I also have learned that when I tried to be someone I wasn't and be like, okay, just to show you how well-rounded I am, here's a waltz. That didn't go well for me either. Yeah. You know? that's, that's <laughs> I'm like, I could do this because I don't, I like, I think it exists in rock music, maybe not like in any other any other genre, but like when you're a rock drummer, it's like, oh, you're a rock guy. And it's kind of like, right. you're a rock guy, you're cute, you know, like, yeah. I, you know, I'd love to see you not smack the drums. And it's like, yeah, I can not, you know, just, I, I can do other things apart from rim shot, mate. So I think right. there's a part of you as rock drummers and, and a part of me as a rock drummer that wants to show like the other areas of my playing. Yeah. But like you said, mate, like at the end of the day, you just got to go off and be be yourself and just play how you play. And and, and like you said, when you're excited about a track, it shines through way more than if you're just trying to yeah. do it. So I mean, think about Jerome Flood. Like he won the drum off, yet he still posts, please follow my rock band. because oh, yeah. he, Right? Because he wants you to know, like, look, I'm not just the guy that won the drum off. Like I'm in a band and it's a rock band. So whatever your, you know, preconceptions are about me, like I'm in a rock band. It's like, I kind of feel like, dude, you're a serious heavyweight pro. You can just say, follow my band. But I, we are ex we're talking exactly about what he's going through is like, hey, just so you know, I can do other things, you know? And when it comes to a clinic, oh, it's so hard not to fall back on those things. When I was out with Matt Halpern and JP Bouvet, we used to call that pulling your shoot. Like, did you pull your parachute too early? Did you freak out? Because we talked ahead of the clinic about who you wanted to be tonight and who you wanted to bring to the crowd. So when... When do I pull the shoot early and get out of this solo that I'm playing just so I can start teaching? Because that's my comfort zone. When mm. is Matt playing a funk groove? And then just out of nowhere, he goes straight into dun, 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 into periphery because it's like, okay, I'll just give the crowd what they want. you know. And it's, it's a tough thing, man. Every single night on those uh, Common Thread Clinic tours, Matt, JP, and I would all try our best to like find a way to be who we wanted to be and give the crowd what, what we wanted to share with them while still giving them what they wanted to see. And it's it's not an easy thing. And if wow. if we had cracked the code, we would just tell the other people how to do it. I think reps is the key. I'm sure that on that clinic tour with Marco, that must have been crazy on the first day. But after a few days of it, it's like, okay, I kind of know my thing. I know who I am. The problem is then COVID hits and you have 18 months off. And yeah. you got to start all over again. It's like, man, I, I felt like that with my clinic tours. Like, okay, I know who I am as, as a clinician. Well, it'll be two years from my last clinic to my next clinic, I got to yeah. start from scratch. That's a long time. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I don't even know. Am I, do I still play drums? I'm pretty sure like, I'm just like a, a camera lens collector now. <laughs> I, said it, um, I said it in last week's episode, but like I met up with uh, someone I hadn't seen in a while uh, and it was socially distanced, of course, but of course, uh, it was a business thing, but I literally didn't know how to say hello. I was like, hi, hi mate, what have you been doing? 
Yeah, man. And I, didn't, I was like, can I touch you? Can I not? No, we probably shouldn't. And it was just like so weird. And then I'm like, oh my God, I can't even speak. I've got to play the drum soon in front of like 3,000 people. I'm going to be Ugh. absolutely shit. But I can't wait. It's going to be fun, mate. It's going to be When fun. people but- come at me, I-, I can handle the the elbow out thing. It's like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. But when someone comes at me with a full handshake now, I'm so paranoid. Uh, like, I mean, like 900 news stories run through my brain as I'm like, okay, this one's for you, bro. And then as I'm shaking, I'm like, I can just feel myself dying. And then I'm like, come on, dude, you've shaken a million people's hands. You've hugged a million people at Nam, And now you can't even shake someone's hands without freaking out. What the heck? So oh, weird, mate. That, it, like, talking about COVID real quick, mate. It's made me realize, like, how much more I should have washed my hands. Like I was, I was a clean guy anyway. Like you know, right. coming out of the public toilets, I just, I never touched the handles or anything right. like that. But oh my god, mate! Now I'm like that. I'm like, I used to shake a stranger's hand and then and just eat fries, it. just eat some, <laughs> eat some chips, just with that same hand. Yeah, it's, so yeah, it, it's kind of crazy, man. Like I, n- whenever we do, uh, you know, you, me, Ash, and Carter, Annika, Yoast, we have the Liverpool thing coming up. Um, when we do that, it's going to be very weird to be like, I, I mean, do, do you wear gloves? Do they make hand skin color gloves that I could wear where it looks like I shook your hand, but I really didn't. Yeah, we have all, all around with those little, like, um, I don't know if you got them in America, but it were these little like hand toys you got back in the day. And it was like a little hand. Oh yeah. Stick, <laughs> little grab a claw. That's what we're around with that. Oh my God. Okay. I feel like we've crushed that subject. Moving on to our main topic. How do we do? Where are we at from main topic? Half hour in, not bad. It's pretty good for us. Groove. Okay, so this is one of those things that it can be a misnomer depending on how it's it's brought to you. And I know for me, I didn't know in the very beginning when I first started drum lessons as a kid, I didn't know that grooves could be a noun. I didn't know that a groove could be a thing. I thought what I was playing was called a beat and the beat either grooved or it didn't groove. And then somebody would say, oh, fat groove. And I was like, are we talking about the feel or are we talking about the notes? And then they'd go, yeah. And I'd be like, okay, you're not helping me at all, man. Like, I don't understand what the heck is groove, you know? And so as I'd grow up or as I was growing up, all of a sudden I started replacing that word beat with groove. Like, oh, I like that groove. That's a sweet groove. But then I would find myself at other times saying things like, oh, that thing just grooves so hard, maybe talking about the entire picture. So my first question to you, and we can explore this at length, but what is groove? Oh man, it's such a difficult, mate, when you said, okay, take, let, take, go ahead and answer this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you said, basically listeners, we were like, we always like throw ideas and Mark was like, let's do an episode on groove. And I was like, that's amazing. And then I, was, I said, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to give me a week to think about this. Um, and that was an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really like. For me, I think groove is two things. Okay, groove is is like uh, there's one side of it where let's there's the science behind it and 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 the wrong or right thing. Let's okay. say for, in a studio where you get someone that you know is it isn't grooving and it's not you're not doing what you're supposed to do on the drums where every you've got four limbs they're not working well with each other the dynamics are are kind of off and, and you might be out of time then that's when i would probably say mate i reckon let's just work on some groove let's practice groove mm. and then there's another side of it that i just use it as like a positive descriptive word for things like that that is so, that just grooves or that just you know right. like and uh i think that side of it for me is three things that side of it is space okay. um flow and dynamics uh, so there's definitely like a, a side of it that I think is, I don't like to say wrong or right, but there is a thing where it's like, actually, no, that's like, you need to, you need to work on groove. And then there's a side of it where it's like, the groove is just like an add on where it's like a, an opinion for someone. Do you know, is it, does that make yeah, sense? No, absolutely. Very hard, very hard thing to explain, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I think you that makes sense when you start diving into fluidity and space and stuff like that that's when you're actually focusing on on groove did my internet die then yeah but you're golden okay cool don't even worry about it and i and i i'd kind of zoned out and was like thinking about different matcha recipes so (laughs) 
No, I, th- I, I found out as well when I was talking, thinking, Eddie, are you making any flipping sense at all, mate? Because it, it doesn't sound like you are, but um, it, it's hard what, to explain. That's what Groove is, right? Is It's like this kind of ambiguous thing that is very hard to explain, very hard to understand. It's hard as an educator to give the explanation of Groove to someone else because it it's it's a it's almost a perception maybe you think it does groove and maybe i don't you know i think that the most important the most important thing about something as far as its contribute contribution to groove is is it appropriate so are your dynamics appropriate for the moment so you could be very dynamic in your playing and super ghost noty and tasteful kind of like a tower of power funk vibe but if you're playing that in a metal band, it's like, we can't hear any of that stuff. You're being covered up. So your, your, your dynamics are not appropriate for this genre. I always tell the campers when they get here, look, this is my personal kit. Please play it with care. At the same time, if we're playing a rock tune and you don't hit the snot out of my drums, I'm going to be very upset because I don't care how loud you are. I don't care how quiet you are. I care how appropriate you're playing in relationship to the genre that you're playing. So you know, I think what's tough is like when we think groove, it's like I know that a lot of people that haven't really had to do a podcast on it and try to explain it to somebody else always say it's the human element. And it's like, OK, so you're telling me that none of the Jay Dilla stuff grooved. And it's like, yeah. oh, well, I mean, and it's like, well, then what? So if it was cookie cutter, black and white, one or a zero, we would just have an explanation for it. But I think yeah. for something to groove it takes, like you said, a few different elements. I think the first thing is if you're dealing with people, then we have to think about groove in a different way because can a drummer by themselves on Instagram groove? Of course they can. Can it groove? Yeah, of course. Then what happens when you put people in? So to me, what happens is a drummer by themselves can groove. The groove itself can groove and feel good and be like, yeah, that's it. As soon as you involve a second person, then I think the word pocket comes into play because pocket to me is when multiple people agree on rhythm, timing, dynamics. It doesn't even have to be perfect timing. It just takes two or more people to agree that the the time is doing this. You know, then it's in this pocket. It's in this, you know, quote unquote groove where we have all agreed on our dynamic level, on our timing. And if I gave you like this, and I kind of pulled it back, but my bass player felt it like a click metronome. Even if we were in the exact same BPM, we're not in the pocket together. We don't agree on rhythm. We don't agree on feel. So we don't groove. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah. I think. Um, what if another- you said no? <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? No, it doesn't. You just clarify that. Maybe. Yeah, be like, no, I can't. I did my best. One of my mates is so good for that. Like, he will say something and he'll just go, "What do you mean?" And you and you're like, "Oh shit, I I don't know. I just I thought I told you everything. I thought I just said, but obviously that didn't. You you were asking for more information, so I'm sort of stumbled. Um, <laughs> he's so funny. Uh, but yeah, another thing that I should have said is character. Like, I think mm. character comes into it. It's like what you say when you're playing. Uh something that is suited for the specific genre or band or instruments or room or atmosphere or whatever but like character is a huge thing for me you know like you can look at someone like eric moore and be like oh my god man he's just got so much groove and you're like yeah he has for sure and then you you could look at someone like um do you remember the band the hives yeah of course do you know that the, the swedish like indie band pop band yep i can't remember what song it was but i'm picturing their drummer now and it's this song and he just plays like this, just insanely sort of stiff, stiff yeah. Have you, whatever you want to call it. I would sure. see that as a groove as well because it's character. It's being so confident in what yeah. you're playing, how you're playing it, that it's just grooving and it's for that song and it comes across in a very confident way, which then says to me, okay, this is what it is and I, I love it and that's, yeah. that's groove to me. Um, so character definitely comes into it. Um, but yeah, like when I first started sort of, really diving into sort of groove and making things flow it was in in a band situation because it's so yeah. hard to do that when you're just on your own man you know what i mean 100 like, percent. i mean how many people do we know in the professional drum world that if you 
made them play by themselves are like, I just can't really be myself until there's a track. And then they yeah. just come alive, you know, because they they have something to feed off of and something to groove with. And I think that that's such a tough thing. You have to sit down. I mean, I always call like that. If you're learning something new, there's a moment when it grooves, like you're learning it, it doesn't groove, it's stiff. And it's note by note. It's it's a PDF. You're reading the notes. It's one note at a time. Then you finally get it down. It still doesn't groove, but you can play it. But then there's this moment where your shoulders just drop yeah. and you start thinking about other things you have to do later in the day. And you're like, okay, we're here. Now this thing. Grooves. Yeah. I did that happen with you when you used to play live in your band? Because that, that, that was the same with me. Totally. But I used to do this thing and I, um, I always used to think it anyway. I always used to sort of think to myself, I never really say it out loud because it was, it was never going to happen. But I always wished that you could tour a song so play it every night live for a year and then record it for your album. Because totally. what I used to do was like write parts or play parts and then, you know, do a thing, record it and then get to playing live and chip away at this thing that um, day in, day out. Fair, and then it, it comes fairly, alive and it becomes and like you said, muscle memory kicks in. And that's a yeah. huge part of the groove as well, I think. But like, yeah, your shoulders drop and then you come up with new little things. And, that, and that's when I wish you could just record. Yeah because you'll have a little do-over yeah 100 yeah. percent. but yeah i used to i mean anytime we would write a song uh or a part we just did it the other day um with man on the moon we were kind of messing around we wrote something just by accident and then immediately i just said guys can we just loop that for like 10 minutes and i mean it, it's a two measure part two bars for 10 right. minutes because i have to wait like this is a very intricate drum part and it's, it's very mechanical. I kind of stumbled on it. I don't even know what the groove is yet. I'm just playing notes, but I don't know what the primary notes are, what the supportive notes are. It's just 32 notes jammed together. And so then all of a sudden it came alive and it was like, okay, the snare on the of four and then this other one, that's going to be the backbeat now. And it, it takes a while for that to come alive. And then once you get it down, it's like you said, with muscle memory, now I kind of have to wait until this isn't physically challenging. And once that happens, I can focus on the groove. So I think what we can do now is let's bring in some of our patron questions because they had a bunch of questions about groove and that will spur on some other stuff. Uh, let's, uh, let's go with Matt Malor. Uh, this is an out there question, but do you think there's any way to actually understand in a mathematical or rhythm rhythmical sense why something grooves? Um, like I can play the same groove as Jeff Beccaro, but it'll never sound like Jeff. Um, is it something with note spacing, consistency, variance in swing from note to note? I, I know immediately when I play a groove, if it's really feeling groovy or not. And I'm wondering if there's more of a way to explain this than just a feeling. And, uh, thanks guys for the podcast. Monday is my favorite day of the week. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. That's I think nice. that's, that's kind of what we were just talking about, right? Is like, it, you can't make it a mathematical thing because we've you know heard like the meters play with zigaboo modalist and like i don't even know if they were on a click i mean it's the feel is so impossible to like mathematically figure out but it grooves so hard but then there's you know jay dilla stuff or where they're just programming a drum machine and it's completely quantized and it feels amazing and, and it grooves super hard so you know, when we were talking about pop, like the pop you'd like to play in, that stuff is so quantized, but it still grooves. Yeah, I think I think it's an impossible question to answer, mate, because I think it's like this is gonna sound very, very hippie, but it's like art, isn't it? It's like when 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 is art finished? No one knows, but like the artist just sort of goes, it feels right, and that's that. Right. And it's the same sort of thing, like you know, like um it's always very difficult when like you're sort of comparing yourself to other drummers or like how they've recorded something or whatever. And that's where I think being an artist or playing in a band, that's when you really discover your groove. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't no one agree. Has, you're not imitating something, you're not covering someone, you're not sort of like trying to replicate someone or, you know, cause if I tried to replicate your groove, I wouldn't be able to do it. So it's like, I think, um, I think a good way to start to practice on groove, this is a bit of a, I've, I've gone off on one here, but a good way to start practicing on groove, which will make, help you sort of understand it a little bit more I think is is writing original music or just writing a loop and recording yourself and going yeah. that's that's my thing that's that's groove for me that's what I consider groovy I think also like you said when you're playing with a band the one thing you do get is 
you keep in the beginning trying to impress your bandmates with how difficult the thing you're doing is. But then at some point you do something that's not difficult at all and your bass player turns around and smiles at you yeah. and you're like, wait, that? And you realize <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you just wanted it to feel good this entire time. You didn't care how difficult, I was like, dude, this is in the back page of Modern Drummer and they said no one could play it, but I'm playing it. You know, and your bass player's like, I don't know what Modern Drummer is. I don't know, you, that means nothing to me. Yeah. But when you it, played that simple thing and you didn't speed up and you didn't drag and it was all, it's like, okay. And the more of those looks you get, the more you realize like, that's all they want. They want it to feel good. They want to have this just bedrock foundation that they can put their parts on, you know, and, yeah. and they want it to feel good. They want it to groove. We, we spoke about this before, but you know, when you're recording some like footage for Instagram, for example, right. And you, um, you watch the footage back. And the bit you you go to the bit that you think you nailed, right? right. Yep. And then the bits that you love are the ones that you were ne you were never thinking about in the moment when you were recording them. You're like, that was a sick bit, and you, but it didn't even register in your brain whilst playing. And that says it all, I think, is because it was just a thing that naturally occurred, and you weren't overthinking it, and it happened naturally, and you were just in the moment. And that's why those moments when you watch the pitch back stand out. Um, <laughs> so I think like a lot of the time it's made just like turn down those thoughts and just play and yeah. like you said yeah. don't worry about it being complex don't worry about it being too simple just let something happen and that's when you're yeah. like moving it's so tough though to to turn down those things when we just have social media so present all the time because um you know you're thinking like okay who is judging this and I think that that's a you know, we've talked about this on our social media episodes, but it's very important to know who your audience is. And I'm okay with drummers going completely bat crazy on the drums because their audience is a bunch of drummers that just want to geek out over drums. And and groove really isn't important because they just want to see how fast this person can go. If like if that's your audience, that's fine. But if your audience is hopefully gonna get you the next Justin Bieber gig, then groove is very important. And so I think that that's one of those things that we have to take the pressure off of ourselves to understand that there are very, very important principles to music in general, but especially to rhythmic music, like drumming. Yeah. That we just can't get, like I always tell my students, I can't get you out of this one. You have to have good timing. You have to have independence. You have to have enough hand speed and foot speed to pull off anything you can ever think of. I can't get you out of these things. Now, if you don't want to play, if you don't want to learn a waltz because you don't want to play jazz in three, four, I can get you out of that. I can, I can sign a note for your teacher or for your doctor and get you out of that. But I can't get you out of like, you have to make this thing feel good. You have to have control. Once again, you have to be able to play appropriate. If, if you bring a tower of power groove to the Deftones, you have to smack the hell out of it. And if you bring a Deftones groove to a pop, get, well, actually modern pop, you could smack it too. But <laughs> if I was doing something with a little bit more of a fusion vibe, like I'm going to have to have a little bit more texture, taste, even tuning comes into it. You know, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't want to yeah. hear somebody play when it's like, that is a great snare tone you just did then. The bsh, the bsh. <laughs> Thanks. There's like a, there's like a Z H, like kind of Z at the end there so all right next one is up from tom deganji what is the number one this is a great question what is the number one groove killer in your experience in other words what should drummers avoid doing to make sure that music grooves examples going for big fills trying to do too much losing focus not listening to others in the band awesome question what is the number one groove killer wow that is a brilliant question and uh not listening to the bands or the music or the room is a big one big 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 one there's nothing worse but like i don't know you'll, you'll you'll be in a room writing some music it's all together in a practice room and someone's playing something and and you just come in with like something that's just not suitable at all and it just kills the vibe instantly yeah. um so that's a big one for sure um i think yeah just be, yeah i think that's it mate in my opinion like just just coming into something appropriately and just understanding like what is required for of you being a drummer in yeah, that current yeah. situation you know i think that we as educators need to put a much bigger emphasis on practicing how to listen because i've had plenty of students over the years that are playing their part that i taught them perfectly 
and I have them playing to a drumless track and the two of them just go like this. And at first I'm wondering like, dude, do you not hear that? But clearly they don't hear that because if they did, they would just course correct and they'd be right back on the groove. But they put, they put all their time into the drumming, didn't put any time into learning how to listen and how to adjust. And especially if it's somebody that grew up with just crutch drumming, meaning they only played to other drummers. So their time was always adjusted by the snare of the other drummer on the track. So if you're only playing to your favorite songs, anytime you get off, you go and you come back. Well, now that we've taken those drums out, do you know how to pick up the time in a bass riff or in a guitar riff? Like, what if the bass doesn't go doom, 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 and you don't have, if it's just, oh, you know, somebody with a <laughs> yeah, bow yeah. and you're like, uh, bro, could you tap your foot or something? So it's like, oh, but wait, 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 way in the back. You hear, you hear the third guitar going, chitta, 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 chitta. there's time there. Okay, that's going to be our timekeeper. Even though it's at like a one out of 10 on the volume scale, you have to lean your in-ear monitors into that and go, that's my timekeeper. That's my timekeeper. And so I think that the number one groove killer, like uh, to answer Tom's question, is not being able to hear. And it's the first thing you said, not being able to hear what's going on yeah. around you and yeah. adapt your playing to that. This makes you sound like your granddad, but like it, that's what I do. I do worry about that with like this new wave of just YouTube covers. You know, I do. It's like you are you are straight away like learning someone else's parts so that's immediately you're being less creative whether or not you're like doing your own thing within it you you still are being less creative um and then you, you're you you're using their drums as a metronome and i just think like mate like i saw it happen like this uh, this this guy was just really good on youtube and i saw him in person and like we, we were like good friends you know and it's just like okay. mate it's just so different so so different i was like yeah. mate i'm telling you lot man like you get in a room with people even if it's it doesn't have to be like this next big thing this next project you're doing just right. play with real human beings and i yeah. think that's yeah. when you discover so much about groove there's nothing that i could ever teach you if you had a year on my website and i paid for it, it's all free or a one hour rehearsal where all you're going to do is write original music with people for your first time i could never teach you enough in a year to equal that one hour yeah mate. never because I mean, I, I went through that where like, okay, I'm a kid and I'm learning ACDC. I'm learning everything from the eighties. And I come into my first rehearsal with some buddies and I'm probably 10 years old. And I'm like, okay, so do you guys know the new poison album? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, do you know ACDC? No, let's write something from scratch. And I'm like, well, what do I do? And they're like, well, you make something up. And, and I, you know, my world falls apart. I'm like, make yeah, something yeah. up. No, yeah. no. Can we get the drummer from poison in here? Can Ricky rocket come on down and, because I can copy it if he'll just do it. And then you realize, uh-oh, so that, okay, so Ricky Rocket must have come up with those drum parts when CC DeVille was playing the guitar. And it's like, yeah, that's, yeah. so I, I agree. I think that there is such a massive benefit to social media. We are still talking about groove, everybody. Just calm yeah. yourselves. Yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. there's <laughs> such a massive benefit to social media as far as giving people an outlet to share what they are doing in their rooms all by themselves whether they play with people or not. The only issue that I think you and I both have with it is now some of those people are getting celebrated for doing nothing other than that. And I don't want other people to think that that's the best path to a like fulfilling yourself because uh, it doesn't matter how good you are or how new you are. Like you've said a million times on this podcast, there's nothing quite like being in a room with other human beings and making something. Oh my Lord. And it's just such an amazing feeling. And I don't want people to miss out on that because they were chasing this Instagram fame or like an endorsement because they have this many views on YouTube. It's like, there's nothing wrong with that. You and I both put up content daily on YouTube, Instagram, wherever. So, but I, like if somebody said, oh, by the way, social media just, just died, it's gone nothing really changes in my day. It's like, oh, cool. A couple more hours opened up for me to focus on what I love doing, you know, creating educational yeah, yeah. content. Now maybe I can have two band rehearsals in the week instead of one. So I think that we both feel that same way where we want everyone to have that experience to play with other humans and to be excited to create things from scratch rather than always building on, okay, well, I took this groove from this drummer and I opened the hi-hat on the end of the four. So now I'm going to upload it. It's like, oh man, what's your take on it? What's your vibe on it? Yeah. And I, I get a ton of questions about how did you get studio work and stuff like that. Still talking about groove. Yeah. Still talking about groove and, <laughs> and, and uh, 
all the all the gigs I've done, all the session stuff that I've done, like even the stuff that I don't really talk about that have been, you know, wicked stuff like new bands and things like that. It's always because of of groove and and my capability to just like write a part on the spot when there's a band watching me, including the drummer of that band, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Then, and like the the manager and all these kind of things and that has come from just like they they say groove pays bills and and that is a very bold statement but in a way like i kind of agree with that you know like it does like to get studio work and to record you've got to have that sort of that groove and that comes from just being creative and chipping away and trying to create new ideas and playing with different people in different rooms and writing parts you know and it comes from caring about grooves the noun like learning grooves and and hearing something go what is that and someone else says oh that's called a halftime shuffle like oh cool i'm going to explore that environment and i'm going to learn that world but I, I have to imagine the mds that have hit you up have never said hey i saw that lick you did the other day do you want to play for dua lipa like yeah <laughs> it's honestly like the stuff in the studio i used to go to the studio in uh um, belgium called icp all the time it's amazing there's so many cool projects there um and I, I always used to go about this like specific producer and it was just like he heard me he had never worked with me before uh i got in there the first time we went there together and i could tell he was a bit skeptical and then like within 30 seconds of me playing he was just like right you from now on always use me wow it's just like you can just tell you know what i mean you can tell yeah. within 20 seconds that okay this guy gets it he gets it and this this groove he has and this sort of like yeah i mean that sounds really fucking egotistical but do you know what i mean no. it's that 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 groove I where think... it's, he has he's played with real human beings you know <laughs> yeah i think it comes down to honestly like where did you put your focus and so when you look at somebody that has put a lot of focus on chops you know maybe you can forgive whether it grooves or not because that's all they've done their whole life you know like i don't expect i don't know if you ever got to see and one basketball over there but, oh, mate. Okay. The Am One Street team, hot sauce, mate. I used to be all hot over. sauce. So I don't expect hot sauce can just jump into an NBA game and understand the triangle offense and actually play by the rules. It's like the dude has spent his entire life throwing heat on a basketball court, you know, in one on one, two on two, four on four games. So I don't expect it to be. Uh, like for him to have all the NBA rules down. I also don't expect that I can grab somebody from the NBA, throw them on a, you know, a court in New York and be like, yeah, just, just do a 360 dunk. The guy's like, uh, I can do a crisp bounce pass and yeah. yes. then my partner can lay it up. And it's like, oh, but I thought you were a pro. And it's like, no, I'm, well, what's a professional? A professional is somebody who's mastered the fundamentals. Yeah. So I think everyone has to decide, well, where do you want to put your focus? And, you know, like when you and I watch, um, who's our um, Australian boy for a and uh, Brody oh, Simpson. Uh, yeah, Brody, yeah. So Brody clearly cl cares about groove a lot. He's a producer. So no matter how weird the stuff he's playing is, because that dude can get out there, mm. it's still rooted in groove. And the foundation yeah. is groove and it starts with a groove. So one last question, and this is a great question. This is from Jim Hendigus. I always struggle with that name. Uh, when I talk to non-drummers, I find myself constantly defending drummers who are known for solid grooves. For example, Charlie Watts, Steve Jordan. People I know tend to be mesmerized by drummers with speedy hands, insane fills, or fast feet. But solid feel and grooves don't seem to overly impress the average musical listener. How do I sell to a non-drummer or even a beginning drummer the value of good groove skills? I think the first thing is you have to go back in your own personal timeline and think, who got you into drums? Was it guys that really grooved hard? No. Like, it was somebody that was throwing some heat and showing off and you were like, that's amazing. I want to do that. And then as we learn more about the instrument and what really matters on the instrument, then we start to realize like, yeah, I used to say that guy Steve Gadd sucked my bad uh he's pretty good <laughs> you know like like well yeah. steve jordan can't even play a fill and then it's like my bad uh first of all i just discovered his fusion stuff from the 70s and 80s and yeah actually now i realize playing gravity with john mayer as is way harder than that lick that i just learned a lot harder i think it's it's I don't think you should even just try to convince anyone of anything, mate. I think like it's, it all depends on where you are in your journey. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like 
it's funny, mate. I, I, I actually dived into a lot of chops um, fairly recently and still am, to be honest, because I never played them as a as a kid. I never played them. You've got to remember, like, for me, I was in my bands when I was, like, 14, 15, playing music. I never got to learn these chops. Um, and when I was home from tour, um, I, I, we were just practicing and playing music. I never got to play them. Um, and so that's why at this point, I'm I'm diving into that world a little bit more because yeah. that's where I'm at in my journey. And like, like you said, mate, it's, it's it's just because we love the drums, we might not necessarily like all these little individual parts or agree. But I think, um, I think, yeah, I just think you don't have to convince anyone of anything, mate. I like I totally agree. <laughs> do you know what I mean, I th- maybe a, a, a shit answer, but no, I, that, I, like it really does depend on where you are in your journey and what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go, you know? hundred percent. I was talking to Carter yesterday and we were talking about what it's like when a non-musician just says like, huh, huh? What about Neil Peart? And it's like, yeah, he's amazing. I yeah. mean, what, what am I going to say? Be like, well, yeah, but he's no Vinnie Caliuta. It's like, dude, he's amazing. Do you think yeah. he's amazing? Then he's amazing. Or like, I mean, for me, I live in Northern California. So it's not, you know, we're seven hours away from Southern California. So we have a huge country music scene, a lot of country fans here. And when I'd be at CrossFit, I would be, you know, they don't know what I do for a living. And, and maybe they know like, oh, I think he plays drums or something, but they don't know like the depth of, of our world. So I'm sitting there doing my stretches and they're like, yeah, I went and saw Big and Rich last night, drum solo. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. cool. If that's how you felt, one, I probably would have been in that same crowd thinking the same thing. I've been to a Taylor Swift concert and freaked out over the drum solo because it was like, well, this this moment deserves exactly what's happening. The last thing I want at a Taylor Swift concert or at a country concert is Weckle to go all fusion on. It's like nobody would, <laughs> everybody just go like get a drink. So yeah. I think that whatever moves somebody, I mean, you and I have, I guess, beating this to a dead horse like uh, i'm not even going to talk about dead animals but (laughs) we've we've talked about this so much on this podcast i know youtube will just roast me for being like did you just say a dead cat um so i think that we've talked so much about well did people enjoy what you're doing did you achieve what you set out to achieve Mm. if so then yeah you're set and i think with groove it's kind of the same thing to answer jim's question though i think eddie nailed it on the head don't try to convince anybody of anything. If anything, just wait until their ears get to a point. I mean, I have to do that with my students all the time. Who's yeah. your favorite drummer? And they say, uh, whatever, Travis Barker. Perfect. Love him. We learn a bunch of Travis stuff. And then eventually I show them, hey, that groove, that also showed up on this Billy Cobham album back in the 70s. And they're like, who's Billy Cobham? I'm like, oh, well, let me show you. And then we just kind of start going down. I start opening these doors. Oh, that thing that Travis just did? that actually showed up on this Dennis Chambers album back in the day and like open that door slowly. And it's like, you don't have to like this stuff. I just want you to know it exists. Yeah. Um, exactly. And I, I think as well, that, that, that comes from the angle of like recording and, and creating content, especially now, you know, like a lot of people don't upload content because they're so worried about these thoughts or like, who am I trying to convince? It's like, yeah, you're not trying to convince anyone mate, of anything. You're just uploading a, a video of you playing an instrument that you love and enjoy. And that should be where the full stop is put. Do you know what I mean? I totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. I think that's a great point. So now we can get out of here. Everybody. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for watching. If you're watching us on our YouTube channel, we appreciate it. If you get a chance, please rate and review this podcast. And if you want to be a part of our little family that we got going on, it's growing by the day. Uh, so we would love to have you as part of it. Just hit up uh, patreon.com slash drum with Mike and Eddie. I don't know if we, we did a good job, right? We talked about Groove. Hey, we, we spoke about Groove a lot. The thing is with, with, with Groove specifically and drums as a whole, I guess, it all ties into each other, doesn't it? So it's like, yeah. that, especially something like Groove, mate, it's such a big subject. But um, I, I do think, though, that we all need to constantly be asking ourselves while practicing, but does it Groove? We yeah. have to have that in there because if it doesn't, then what's the point, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. there's there are plenty of things that I've uploaded on Instagram and I'm so bummed, like kind of halfway through the day as you keep checking the post and you watch it <laughs> one more time. And I'm like, you should have waited one more day. You, you didn't, yeah. it wasn't grooving yet. You can play it, Mike, but it wasn't grooving. You should have waited yeah. one more day or a week or a month until it grooved, until you had freedom and a sense of, you know, just the, be, the, the, hmm. Ooh. the ability hello to explore it a little bit more where it's like okay i was stuck in my box and it wasn't grooving and so i think we all need to ask ourselves does it groove if it doesn't you're not done with this yet yeah i mean that, that's what i did with the track i played to the other day like the reason why i don't upload tracks um 
me playing to tracks on Instagram is because I find that stuff very, very important. And it's so, um, I take it seriously, you know, and I love that whole pr process of writing parts and just like jamming and making sure it's like the take, you know what I mean? And uh, that's why I don't do it because I, but another thing, the reason why I do do it is because it helps me with groove. I play a song that I've listened to once. I don't have the click on. I have it fairly low in my monitors and I try to just feel it out as the groove, as the song is uh, playing as I'm learning it and that really does help with groove but to go back to your point it's the same thing I watch it and I'm like I could spend like way longer on this but yeah. fuck it I'm gonna get it up anyway. yeah I mean that's that's kind of where we're all at right now so everybody I hope you had fun and thank you for listening to us babble and babble about groove if you are a patron just know that next week we are doing a zoom hang so uh, get in on that and we will have some fun but until then episode 35 I think wow 35 bro 35 hours of us just yakking. Episode Love 35 it. is in the can. Bye-bye. Bye. Watch -bye. Bye. it. Here we go. It's just about gone. That's it.